In today's tutorial, we'll set up our Firebase project and then create basic login and sign up functionality using email and password. Hey guys, I'm back from a two week break and it's been about 23 days since I've made the last video. Today we'll start a new series for Firebase, which will be the patterns that I use in production to speed up my development as well as keep all of the code maintainable and easy to change in the future. For today's video we'll have a starting project which you can download from foldstacks.com. You can click on the download code button below the thumbnail. You can then unzip that and drag it into your IDE. The project has my basic MVVM style architecture set up and it is an architecture that has a view, a view model and then services. Views is what the user will see and interact with. The view model is the logic behind the view which controls its state and the services will be used by the view models to perform the actions that the user is requesting. The project has a basic UI developed. We make use of some of the widgets that I use in production and we also have our view models, dialogue servers and the navigation server set up, the dialogue manager and some constants for our routing. We'll start with setting up a new project on Firebase console. You can open up the Firebase console and click on create project and name the project compound. We will enable the analytics. You don't have to but I always do and I'll select my fold stacks project for the analytics and then click on create project. Once this is complete we can continue to our dashboard and for this project I will only set up the Android project. There's a complete guide on the Firebase Docs website for the iOS one as well. For the Android package name I will give it com.foldstacks.compound and for the nickname I'll set it to compound with a capital C. Then you can go ahead and click on register app and once the app is registered, you can download the Google Services JSON file. This is the file that gives you access to your project that you'll be using inside your Android project to connect to your Firebase project. Next up, we'll head over to the code and we'll set up the Android project to connect to our Firebase project. We'll start off by going to the pubspec.yaml file and adding the Firebase auth package. We will use version 0.15.3. Once that is downloaded, you can open up the build.gradle file in the Android folder. Then under dependencies within the build script object, we will add the Google services class path dependency. We'll use version 4.3.0. The last thing we have to do is apply the plugin to the application. So go to the build.gradle file in the app folder within the Android folder. And the last line we will apply the plugin by typing apply plugin and supplying it the value com.google.gms.google services. Then for the last step we'll copy the google services.json file that we downloaded into the app folder within the android folder. Then we can run the application to make sure that our setup works. One thing that I usually look for in the project is this note in the debug console that indicates that the Firebase core plugin.java files has been pulled in and it's in your project and running. And as you can see the project runs and we just see our basic sign up view. Now we can head back to the Firebase project setup and you can click next after the config and then just click on skip the step for the Android Firebase project. Now to finish up the setup for the Firebase console project. We'll click on the authentication tab in the left toolbar which is the third icon from the top and you'll click on setup sign in method. Click on email and password and then we'll enable that sign in provider. And now we're ready to start adding our code for the actual implementation. What we'll do is create a new service called authentication service. This service will provide the functionality to log in and sign up. In the future it will also hold our current user which we can access at any time in the view models. It will also do some basic caching if we require it on the local preferences and it will handle all the authentication functionality within the application. So under the services folder create a new file called authentication service and inside that file create a class with the same name authentication service. We'll start off by adding the login with email function that returns a future. We'll give it two required named parameters. One will be called email and the other one is password, both with type string and we will return null for now. When I import the required 
attribute, I usually use the flutter slash foundation file. Then you can copy that function and change the name of the function to sign up with email. The implementation will be quite simple and both functions will look almost identical by the end of it. Then we can start with the implementation. The first thing we'll do is get the Firebase auth object within the authentication service. We'll create a new final value of type Firebase auth and we'll get the instance from the Firebase auth object and store that in our private Firebase auth variable. We'll start with the login with email function and we'll create a try catch statement. Then we can also add a comma after the last parameter so that we can get the formatting. We'll make the function a sync. Then we'll create a new variable called user and we'll call the function called sign in with email and password on the Firebase auth function. We'll supply it with the email and password that has been passed in. And for the result of this function, I want to return if the value of the user is not equal to null. And for the catch statement, we will return e.message. That is basically it for the login functionality within a Firebase app. Then we'll do the same for the sign up with email function. We'll start with the try catch statement. And this time we will store the value of the return function in a variable called auth result. We will call a function on the Firebase auth object called create user with email and password. And we'll pass in the email and password from the parameters. And then this time for the results, we will return the auth result dot user is not equal to null. What this does is if the user is equal to null, we'll get a false. And if it is not, we'll get true, which means our sign up and sign in was successful. And for the catch statement, we'll return the message from the exception. Then we have to register our service with our locator. So open up the locator.dart file and we'll register the authentication service as a lazy singleton. Then you can open up the sign up view where our UI is based and you'll see that there's a busy button with a to do that says perform the Firebase login. What we want to do here is simply call the sign up function on the model and pass in the email and the password from the text controllers. So to get that functionality, we'll open up the sign up view model and create a new function called sign up that returns a future. We will give it two required name parameters of type string, the first one being email and the second one is password. The first thing we'll do when we get into this function is set our view model to busy by calling set busy true. And then what we need to do is go to the authentication servers, call the sign up function and then check the result and show an appropriate message or perform a navigation. We'll import all of our services. The first one will be the authentication service. Then we'll create another final variable of type dialog service and we'll also locate the dialog service through the locator and we'll do the same thing with the navigation service. For us, our sign up logic will be as follows. If we successfully sign up, we want to navigate to the home view. If we don't sign up successfully and we have a general error, meaning that the user is null, we'll show a general dialog message. If we have a specific error from the try catch block, which is returned from the catch portion of the try catch, we will show that as a dialog error message. The first thing we'll do is create a new variable called result, which will store the value coming back from the sign up with email function call on the authentication service. Then after this call is complete, we will set the busy value to false. And for the result, the first thing we'll check is if it's a Boolean. If it's a Boolean and the result is true, we want to simply navigate to the home view using the navigation service and calling the dot navigate to function and passing in the home view route. If it happens that the user is null and we get a false back, we want to show a general dialog to the user that tells him that the sign up has failed. And for the description of this dialog, we'll say general sign up failure. Please try again later. And if the result is not a boolean, it will definitely be a string. If it's a string, we want to show a dialog again. We'll use the same sign up failure title, but for the description, we'll show the result as the actual value since Firebase will return us a user friendly message. Then you can go to the sign up view. And the first thing we'll do is set the busy property of the busy button equal to the busy property from the model. And then in the onPressed function, we will call sign up 
and we'll pass in to the email value the text value from the email controller and we'll do the same for the password passing in the password controllers text value to test out all of the branches of the if statements I will run the code and enter values into our fields that will cause an error to be thrown by Firebase. The first thing I will do is enter a email that is not valid. When we click on sign up and the value comes back, we'll see the error message that says the email value is not valid. Then I'll enter a valid email with a password that's too short and you'll see the friendly message sent back from Firebase. And if we put a valid email with a valid password and click sign up, you'll see that when completed, we will navigate to the home view. That's basically it for the sign up and the login functionality will literally be exactly the same. To work on the login functionality, you can open up the main file and then change the home property to login view. The login view model and the sign up view model will be exactly the same with only about one line of difference in the code. So I wanted to not show the refactored version of the code. Instead, I'll show you how I would do it with both login view models and then I will dedicate time after this to refactor my code given the implementation works completely. This makes it easier to see if you have broken anything with your refactors. So for now, we will copy all of the imports for the login view model from the sign up view model and then we can also copy all of the code basically for the functionality and paste it into the login view model. Go over to the sign up view model and copy the body of the sign up function. We can paste that into the login view model. Then we'll change the call from sign up with email to login with email on the authentication service. We'll change the title of the dialogs from sign up failure to login failure. And that's basically it. You can go ahead and do your own refactoring. I will leave that for later on as to not mess with the purpose of this video. Head over to the login view and we'll supply the busy property from the model to the busy property of the busy button. And in the onPress function, we will call the login function on the model and pass in the email text and the password text to the respective properties. And once again, if we run this code now and you enter the wrong information, you can confirm that the error handling works easily and it is not as complicated as usual. You can enter uh, the email that you sign up with with the wrong password and you should get an error saying that the password is invalid or the email doesn't match. And then if you enter the correct password, you will see that you log in and you head over to the home view. Now I know this wasn't a lot of code for this video, but I wanted to start out slow with the series since we'll be adding a lot of additional functionality after this. But in general, services functions and view model functions are usually quite small compared to some of the implementations that I see using different architectures. Especially the ones that don't split the business logic from the actual implementation as well, which is what I put in the services itself. This allows the view models to stay very small, the services to be small and a lot of code to be shared given that you know how to refactor properly when seeing duplicate code. So on the next tutorial, we will be making sure that once you've signed in and you open the app, you go directly to the home view. And then we'll also add a user profile with user roles and additional properties on the user profile. Given some of the other implementations that I've seen that has 40 to 50 lines of code all mixed up together, I would like you guys to share this tutorial with people that might benefit just from the implementation of Firebase. They don't have to use the same architecture, but having it wrapped up in a service really makes a big difference when it comes to long-term maintenance and developer happiness. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next week.